What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Elite 2.0 Eagle Point. The Eagle Point is a spring-powered eight-shot cylinder-fed blaster with some tactics. Let's get into it. Included is the blaster, barrel, scope, detached priming handle, darts, and instructions. Installing the priming handles is very easy. They simply screw in. External overview of the Eagle Point starting up at the front. There is a barrel attachment on an in strike barrel lug. Feels like ages since I've got to say that, but the front barrel attachment is pretty cool looking. Standard in strike lug, so you can put this on your strife or another blaster. Pretty snazzy looking design, and there's an in strike tack rail underneath, which would be great for a front bayonet like the chainsaw attachment or something like that. And that barrel attachment goes on to an in strike barrel lug. So you can attach different barrel attachments to the Eagle Point if you'd like to. Keep in mind, this barrel attachment is like specifically tailored for the Eagle Point blaster. The front side aligns, the bottom ridge, and the side little indent match perfectly. So no other attachment is going to match quite like this one, but you can still throw on a different barrel if you want to. Moving back to the cylinder, this is a cylinder-fed spring-powered blaster, and the capacity is eight darts. The cylinder stays in place all the time. It does not pop out of the unit like on a strong arm, but you can rotate the cylinder with your fingers like that for a quicker reload. There are two barrels exposed on each side for a very quick reload, and if you're willing to bend your darts a little, you can actually get a third one in as well. And that's on each side of the blaster, so you can reload this one fairly quickly. Moving down, there's an in-strike tack rail on the bottom of the blaster here. What you want to mount down there? I don't know, but it's great that Nerf gives us the option to add more tactics to our blasters. And moving up, there's another in-strike tack rail right here, so if you want to put on a different scope, you totally can. But this scope looks super cool. It looks like a modern laser ACOG or something like that. Clear plastic lenses on both sides. It's not magnifying, it's not going to help you aim, but it looks really cool. And that's a standard in-strike attachment, so if you want to put this on your strife or another blaster, you totally can, and this is, again, a standard in-strike tack rail. And this optic in the barrel totally fit this carbine look that they're going for. I dig the vibe of this blaster, cosmetically. Moving down to the priming handle to prime the blaster, you do that. The prime strength required is lighter than a lot of elite blasters. It feels much easier to prime this one than others. The prime stroke is relatively short, but I had a number of priming issues with this handle, where I'd prime the blaster back, but it wouldn't actually catch. It wouldn't prime. The priming handle would just snap forward, and I'd have to prime it again, which is kind of annoying. More on that in my opinion. But this priming handle is present on the right and the left-hand side. Full ambi, bro. And as I said, this is a screw-on design, so if you want to take these priming handles off for storage or something, it's very easy. Just don't lose these, or you won't be able to prime the blaster. <laughs> Moving down to the trigger, the trigger pull is pretty standard. Standard, this blaster does have slam fire. And interestingly, the slam fire activates when the priming handle hits the rear position, not the forward position. So the slam fire feels more like a pistol slam fire, like the strong arm, rather than a primaries like the Alpha Trooper. Not good or bad, just worth noting. And now down to the grip. This is kind of an unusual grip, so stay with me here. When you're just holding the blaster, I think this will fit almost all hand sizes. It is more narrow than the elite average. It is smaller than something like the strife or the rapid strike grip. However, the distance between the front of the trigger and the rear of the grip is much smaller than average, which makes it feel like a lot of Doomlands blasters, which are obviously designed for much smaller hands. So it's not at all uncomfortable to hold with big hands, but it's a little cramped when you want to pull the trigger if you're shooting this blaster for like an hour straight. So it's not as comfortable for big hands like mine, but this is going to be more comfortable for smaller, shorter hands. But I'm really surprised by the comfort of the thumbhole stock. I typically don't like thumbhole stocks, but this one's actually pretty comfortable. Thumbhole stocks inherently restrict your wrist movement, so you can't have the same mobility as something like a strong arm or a pistol without this. But it's fairly comfortable, and it makes it look way cooler. They're obviously going for the carbine look, and they really nailed it. So as far as thumbhole stocks go, this is a pretty good one. Moving up, we have this cosmetic element that kind of looks like a gigantic sling mount. It looks kind of weird, but it's even weirder to put your face on it when you're trying to shoot. It's kind of uncomfortable. Not sure why Hasbro designed it that way, but it does look pretty cool, I guess. And on the stock, we have dart storage on both sides, four darts on each side, totaling eight darts, which is one full reload of this cylinder. The dart storage is definitely tight. It holds the darts in place. However, if you leave them in there over time, they are going to crimp the foam. So during the Nerf war, that's fine, but if you leave the darts in there overnight, you're probably going to permanently damage those darts. Back to the stock, this is a fixed in place, non removable non-adjustable stock. And the proportions of the stock actually fit the proportions of the blaster. It's not some dinky little unusable stock. The proportions of the blaster as a whole look really cool, and they feel very cool. That is an external overview of the Eagle Point. Now I'll show you the blaster firing. Starting with Nerf Elite darts. Now using slam fire by holding down the trigger. some waffle head darts. Mm -hmm. 
Operating the Eagle Point went largely as expected. I did not have any catastrophic jams and malfunctions, but I did have a lot of priming issues. The priming issue is this. When I pull back on the priming handle, sometimes it doesn't catch like that. It's technically a short stroke. It's technically human error. I'm not pulling it back all the way. It really feels like this slot should have just been a quarter of an inch longer because it feels like I have to pull it all the way back and then kind of force it at the end there to ensure that it catches. It's not technically mechanical failure. It's just highly susceptible to human error. And I found the problem to be more pronounced when I use the tip of the priming handle here instead of getting closer to the base like that. <laughs> And I think it's just a matter of leverage on the bolt sled. I'm not sure. If that happens, all you do is you re-rack the slide. There's no jam as a result of it. So it's not a catastrophic malfunction, but it is definitely worth noting. Other than that malfunction, I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with this blaster. It operated much like you'd expect it to. To compare the performance of the Eagle Point to others, I put it up on my chronograph and achieved an average velocity of 73 feet per second shooting Nerf Elite darts, which is just a hair over the Elite par of 70 feet per second. So this is shooting just as hard as other Nerf brand dart blasters on the market right now. That is all of the objective information I can provide on the Eagle point, now to my personal opinion. Overall, I am mildly satisfied with this blaster. For the most part, it does what it's trying to do. It looks really cool, it's fun to handle. The priming handle issue is kind of an annoyance, but it's not too big a deal, so it's there and you have to be aware of it, but it, it shouldn't ruin the entire play experience. My favorite parts of this blaster are honestly the barrel attachment and the scope. I actually don't care about this blaster at all. I'm a performance-oriented nerfer. I don't really like eight-shot primaries without removable magazines. That's just impractical for me. So my personal opinion is go buy this for the scope and the barrel and just forget about the blaster. <laughs> But that's just my opinion now to buy or not to buy. If you too are a performance-oriented nerfer, this is not going to win you any nerf wars. If you want to win with a spring-powered cylinder-fed blaster, get something with a higher capacity, like the Dart Zone Villainator. The Villainator has a 40-round capacity instead of an 8-round capacity, higher muzzle velocity, and it's overall just easier to run hard and fast. But if you're a target shooter, a plinker, a more emotional nerfer, and the play experience is important to you, this looks really cool, man. They just really nailed the carbine appearance. The cosmetics, the proportions are gorgeous. I love the barrel, the cool-looking laser ACOG-looking thing. They totally nailed the carbine look cosmetically. This is a very cool looking blaster. So if you don't care about super high velocity, super high capacity, or war practicality, and you just want something to plink with, this could get the job done. So hopefully I've laid out everything you need to make an educated purchase decision on the Eagle Point. If you want to buy one of these, I'll put a link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.